Hello folks, how's it going? It's the big one tonight. It's the big one we've all been waiting for. Every Lovecraft fan I think has been had been waiting for this um film to come out. It's the colour out of space. I've seen it. In fact, I've seen it twice. I watched it and then I watched it again just to uh try and make sure that this was a you know a decent review. But uh because this is a special one, it's obviously a special one. This is um this is pure straight from Lovecraft's pen. You know what I mean? This is and it, and it was a pretty faithful adaptation uh, adaptation, sorry. There was um, they deviate in quite you know a few places, but they've had to because you know it was a short story. It's only you know it takes an hour to read or whatever. Um, so they've had to take a few little details here and there, add a few bits, and it's obviously set in modern day. So um, so yeah, they've, they've they've done a few little bits to it, but I think most of it works. And uh, my opinion of the film is yeah, I I really like it. I think it was it was really good, and I'm very pleased with it. Yeah, I mean, you know, you, there's there's certain you, when you've when you finish watching, there's certain like certain moments where you think, oh, this could have could have happened differently, or that could have happened differently. But generally, I think they, I think Richard Stanley, the director, who's come out of exile to 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 direct this. He hasn't directed a film since flipping late nineties, and he's come out to direct this. And uh, I think he did a great job. I really think he did a great job. Like, I mean, the, the sound, the, the you know the what do they call it? The sound, the uh, the, the soundtrack, the music. Just the little the little bits of sound you hear at certain key moments in the film. Like, there's a moment where the uh, that the color has just literally landed in the garden. And the uh, the gardener family are coming out to have a look, and there's just this these little just these little notes of of music playing in this tense sort of um, tense. I don't know what you call it. Just this constant sort of noise, music, and they have these little min instrumental moments of, and it just sets the tone. And it really builds on the tension. I'm probably waffling about that, but but I, I could have lost my words for a minute. But yeah, it's little things like that, and um, the cinematography, the cinematography is, is amazing. It, it's just like that. The first opening scene, I think it is, you see like the cameras like pointing up at these tall swaying trees, and um, um, the over uh, the the oh Christ, what's it called? Sorry, I paused you there. I, I, got, I got stuck off my bloody words again. The first scene we see is, like I said, of these swaying trees, and it's a voice. The voiceover is um, I, I, I and I don't know. I haven't checked yet. So I should have checked this, but I don't know if it's word for word. But it's literally the opening, the opening words, the sentences, and and um, from the novel Color Out of Space. It's sort of said for us by the character. Um, oh crap! I can't remember what his name his name is in the film, but um, um, it's the guy in the story. It's the guy checking the um, he's going around checking the water, um, toxicity and stuff. Um, in, in the book, I think it's same. It's same. Someone checking the water toxicity, but in the store in, in in the book, it's him coming to check on it after all this has happened, and he hears the story retold. In the film, it's the guy that comes to do the check the water toxicity or whatever he's doing, and he's there in real time. You know what I mean? He's there through all of it. Um, but yeah, it's him reading the, the opening narration, and uh, yeah, it's the fact that they've pulled it straight off of out off of the pages of Lovecraft. It's it's, it's a real nice touch. It's a real nice touch. Christ on a bike! I've just, I've just, I've just completely fluffed that opening to this this uh, review, haven't I? I've I've stuttered over my words. I'm doing it now while I'm apologising. Jesus Christ! I'm not going to start again though, because this is hard work. I'll just uh, try and get it better from now on. <sighs> There's a lot of nods though towards um, Lovecraft. There's like um, the girl in the story, the daughter. Her name is Lavinia. 
which straight from the off, I it rang a bell, but I couldn't think where from. I had to Google it, and it was um, f- um, from the Dunwich Horror, Lavinia Whateley, or Whatley, whatever, however you pronounce that name. Um, I knew I recognised it. Um, she, it's obviously the name's thrown in there. Um, she is, there's one shot where we see the a copy of the Nep- Necronomicon laying on her bed. So she's been reading that. Obviously, the uh, city of Ar- the town of Arkham is involved. Um, the oh, what's his name in the film? God damn it! The bloke who checks the water. He's wearing a um, a Miskatonic University uh, top. And um, there's a nice little touch actually, quite early on, when Nick Cage's character Nathan Gardner is um the colour has fallen and it's like destroyed his front yard and um, the uh, sheriff comes the next day and the mayor and uh, some other people and um, he's describing what happened and he says like um, you know there was this there was this boom and blah 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 and this, and this pink light and then he sort of thinks for a minute and he's like well actually I don't know what colour it was to be honest it wasn't like any colour I've ever seen before and that's that's a nice little touch because obviously Obviously, obviously, the colour out of space is 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 meant to be this colour that is you can't describe it. Human eyes can't describe it because it's nothing that exists on our colour spectrum. But um, how the hell do you come up with that? So it's a nice little touch because obviously it is like a pinkish sort of purplish sort of sort of colour what they've done. But what else are you can do, you know? So I like that little line thrown. I think that was in the trailer actually. Um, but I like that because it, it kind of just, you know, it shuts that argument down, really, don't it? Anyway. Ward. Ward Phillips. That's the name of the dude, the toxic water dude. And he's a hydrologist. Christ, that just came to me. Yeah, Ward Phillips. Hydrologist. Not some random water toxicity dude. Anyway, I'm sorry, I've just, you just that's my mind. It just came to me. So anyway, yeah, you've got the Gardner family, you've got Nathan Gardner, his wife, who's, uh, now it, I think she's either got cancer or has had cancer. I got the feeling that, um, well, I think well, they don't discuss it, actually. She's had to have, like, uh, a breast amputation, I think. I think that's what they're getting at. Um, because he's, they're talking about, Oh, anyway, it doesn't matter. Anyway, I think she's either had cancer or she's got cancer. Um, then there's the daughter, Lavinia. She's into, like, witchcraft and stuff. Because um, the first thing we see, first person we see is her doing some sort of ritual. That's all, yeah. And she's doing a ritual, and she's sort of, like, asking for whatever power to, to make sure her mum's got no trace of cancer in her. Um, and then there's the son, the oldest son, who smokes weed and you know, does stuff. And um, the youngest kid, I think he's called Jack. He's a pretty good actor, this young lad, Jack. I, I, I was impressed with him. I thought he was pretty good. Um, so, yeah, there's the, the family set up. And uh, uh, late one night, they're um, they're all doing their own thing. You know, the, the parents are in bed trying to, you know, get it on and, uh, you know, whatever else. <laughs> Uh, yeah, anyway, they're all doing their own thing in separate rooms and um, suddenly, you know, the colour comes down and uh, they all panic. They go out and uh, and uh, have a look at it. Um, and as I said, the authorities come, the sheriff, did I say that? I can't remember. The sheriff comes around and the, the mayor and have a look. Um, and then the uh, hydrologist, he... Um, He's asking, there's this moment, right? He's asking if anyone else lives on the property. And um, Nathan Gardner says, um, uh, "There's, I think his name's Ezra. There's old Ezra who squats on the property. Um, and this Ward Phillips, the hydrologist, because he's like a black fella. And, and I thought this was going to turn into a bit of a, a racist thing here. Um, but he says he wants to talk to him. And, and Nick Kate, uh, Nathan Gardner says... Well, he won't talk to you. And there's this moment, like, Ward Phillips pulls his face of, like, huh? And I was thinking, oh, God, they, they're going to... 
what are they going to say because he's black or what? But it was nothing to do with that. It was absolutely nothing to do with that because he says, um, Nick Cage says, yeah, he won't talk to you because he's he's special. <laughs> uh, and they go to his little hut and uh, meet him and he's just like this like hippie dude who's like, you know, mad into like nature and that, which there's nothing wrong with. But uh, yeah, it was a funny little moment. That's it. It, it kind of, it took me down one path and just made me expect, you know, there to be that racism put into it, but there wasn't. Uh, nice, nice little touch. Because, well, oh, the reason I thought it was going to say that is because obviously it's a Lovecraft story and there's all this talk of Lovecraft being racist and that, but, you know, Lovecraft was around in the 20s and 30s. Every bloody person, it seems, from the history books was racist back then and uh, I thought they were going to try and make a thing of it, but no. So I'm glad about that. Anyway, they go to uh, visit Ezra and he's a hippie dude and uh, and it's this moment actually that you, uh, something sort of stuck out to me and it's the fact that he's told him that Ezra won't talk to him. But when he gets to, to meet Ezra, Ezra's like a really friendly like dude, a hospitable, friendly, talk to him a lot. You know what I mean? So it just didn't tally. That didn't tally that bit. I don't know why they added that bit if he's just going to then talk to him. You know what I mean? I was expecting some... I don't know. I was expecting not to talk to him, to be honest. <laughs> um, he's got a cat with a, a dodgy name. He's got a he's got a cat called uh he's got a cat called G Spot a pussy called G Spot <laughs> as you do um um yeah <laughs> it's quite funny that but you know what there's quite a few funny moments in this film actually and it's not it's not funny yeah it's not a comedy but there's a few little moments that they're out, they're not even played for for comedy but um one of them that made me laugh a lot. Is the day after the uh, the colours come down, um, the next morning, the mayor has, has got all like uh, news stations and that and the press to come and cover, the, you know, do the coverage of this, of the Gardener Farm, uh, the, the, the meteorite. And um, they come and interview Nathan Gardner. And um, the next day, he's watching, or that night, he's watching it on the news. <laughs> and he's, and he's, he's, I mean, it might not be funny to anyone else. But to me, it was quite funny. And he was just the way he reacted to how he looked. He was like, couldn't someone have given me a comb? Uh, it's saying it out loud now, it don't sound funny at all. But in the film, it made me chuckle. It really did. So you'll have to decide for that one yourself when you see it. Anyway. <laughs> I thought it was funny anyway. But um, straight after that, literally in the same, within the same sort of scene, like in a couple a couple of seconds, minutes later, or whatever, there's a horrible bit where um, Teresa, I think it's the wife's name, Teresa Gardner, she's there facing away from all the kids and him. She's in the kitchen. She's chopping some vegetables up and she's just staring into space. She's, she, at this point, they're all got... You know what? It, even from the, the first moment it came down, there was a little bit of... Are they, You know, there's a little bit of weirdness going on. Like they're acting a little bit mad. Just for an instant, like, you know what I mean? But, yeah, this grows. And um, and she's just standing there chopping up vegetables and chop, 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 chop. And you're thinking, oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. And, yeah, phew, the little kid goes to goes to get mum. And you see her, phew, she chopped her fingers off. Oh, it's like, it's, yeah, she, I mean, you knew it was coming, but it was just that moment. It's like, and it's like, oh, God, and the tension's building in you. And you're like, oh, God, no, no, no. And you think maybe they're going to, are they going to, is it not going to happen? They're just teasing us or what? But, yeah, it, she does it. And, um, yeah, so it's like a little, it's not, like I said, that comedy moment, it wasn't comedy, but um, it's just the way he's getting so irate. He's like, oh, for God's sake, you know what I mean? The UFO, the, 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 news station have described him as a UFO witness and he's like I didn't say that you know what I mean and he's getting all irate and he's like look at my bloody hair couldn't you give me a give me a comb or something and uh yeah followed by like a really tense dread-filled minute you know moment of a uh, chopping her fingers off anyway although saying all of that she cut yeah she, obviously what I just said about her fingers and that it's it's it the only thing that let that down a little bit is when she's done that, she sort of turns around to him, holds her hand up and goes, dinner's ready. And it, it was a little bit, it, I don't know, it was a little bit cheesy. 
took me out of it a little bit. It's a shame, but it wasn't too bad. It wasn't. I probably shouldn't have mentioned it. It's not too bad, but uh, you know, you'll see anyway. There's another moment where they uh, they're watching. They're, they're, someone's got the telly on in the house, and there's a news report and it's the weather report, and it's um, it just mentions it literally just does the weather report for you know Arkham County, and it mentions like Innsmouth and Dunwich and uh, Kingsport and. Just various, you know, um, Lovecraft locations. And it was great because I, I, I remember thinking, because apparently, also, I forgot to say, this is hopefully the first of a, a trilogy of Lovecraft films. The next one, apparently, is supposedly going to be Dunwich Horror, which I, I can't wait for that. But just seeing these names mentioned on this weather report within this film, it, it just it, it feels good. You know what I mean? Because they, they they create this whole, you know, this whole community, this this whole Arkham area, and all the towns and villages. And it, I'm just looking forward to it if they can incorporate it all into this. Like maybe in in the Dunwich Horror, there'll be some reference to, you know, what happened in this film, and you know, the mystery surrounding it. And that that would be that would be super cool. That'd be really good. Anyway. Um, all the characters start experiencing like reality distortions and time distortions. Like, um, like some of them, like say that like I got up in the morning and and like before I knew it, like it was like it was it was dark. It was bedtime again. And they're all going through this sort of like the Ezra, the the the, the, her, the hermit dude who lives out in the woods. He, uh, he uh, the hydrologist just goes back the next day to visit him, and um, he finds him on the floor of his hut like with some listing equipment with it placed to the floor and he's saying I'm listening to the people under the floor. The aliens do. They came down in the rock. And um and then he starts saying that like you know, what's out there is in here and it's in the air, it's in the moisture, it's 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 changing everything and it's, you know, doing all this and uh and he mentions the cat again and uh the the hydrologist says, Where's where's G Spot? <laughs> and uh Ezra says Oh, I don't know, man. And he says, "I'll." The hydrologist says, "I'll keep an eye out for him." And he said, and the Ezra says, "Yeah, cool, man, but I don't think you'll recognise him." You know what I mean? Because everything's it's changing, and there's there's like different flowers, alien-looking flowers that are starting to spring up everywhere, and things like that. Obviously, if you've read the book, you know that things like that happen and that. But yeah. Anyway, Nathan Gardner and his Mrs. Teresa have gone to the hospital because she's obviously cut her finger. Um, and when I get back, like nothing's been done. He, like, he asked them to put the pal out, keep the alpacas in the barn. And and uh, when they get home, like the, the youngest kid, Jackie's out on the lawn. And, and they get home, and obviously, they, uh, Nathan Gardner starts like, having a little go, having a little bit of a go at Lavinia and the kid, the older kid, and that. And that's, this, is, this is where the real mental kicks in. And I was like, whoa, because. He goes nuts. He absolutely loses the plot with her. And you can see it's all starting to go south. It's all going south now. And it's pretty intense. There's, uh, there's this other bit where Nick, uh, Nathan Gardner, Nick Cage is in the uh, shower. And there's this like, the water's not going on the drain. There's this like, this is like white sort of cap thing on the, on the plug hole. And he picks it up and looks at it and he's like, what's this? And then suddenly it sprouts all these little tent like, like little things come out of it like it looks all jelly like and his his reaction is so good at this because i remember watching it and being creeped out by this thing i remember sitting there and like sort of shaking my hand and he's like doing the same and trying to rub it and it was like so it was very very realistic and very good acting because yeah i felt it was just yeah it was, it was horrible but i just wanted to mention that bit because it was it stuck out in my mind it was a real good, and I felt exactly how he was feeling. He was like, oh, trying to wipe his hand and get it off, like, frantically, you know what I mean? So everything's, yeah, everything's just starting to send into madness at this point, and um, all the crops are, he's, all the crops are growing really big. Um, so Nathan Gardner goes out, and he's, like, astounded by this, and he takes them in, and he... Can't believe how he's luck, and he tries them, and they all taste like shit. And he gets he gets so Nick Cage is mental so well. He gets mental about these this fruit and uh, 
And his, Teresa, his missus, comes down and she's unhappy because the satellite dish is not working and blah, blah, blah. She goes nuts at him. Um, and then it's just, from there, it's just descending into madness. And then the, the, there's this a real horrible bit coming up. Um, and obviously the first time I watched it, I didn't know what was going to happen. But on second viewing, I'm sitting there and I'm like, oh, God, that bit's coming up. That bit's coming up. And it's just the, the whole concept of it is horrible. They, um, the, the two sons, the Jack and I think it's Ben, the older lad, they go into the barn to check on the alpacas. And um, the alpacas are fucked. They're like mashed up and mutated and it shows you a close it's a good bit so they show you a close up of them um, because the, the alpacas have been drinking the water I forgot to add um, and there's a close up of their like mutated skin and you can see the the colour out of space it's like the colour going through their little veins and like like just enveloping them you know what I mean and um, so the two kids run out of the barn the older kid runs the younger kid the mum's there as well the younger kid bumps into the mum. She starts cuddling, going, what's the matter? And suddenly this like lightning from the, the colour comes out of the barn and fries them both. And what you see it's done, it's, oh, it's, it's, it's like fused them together. And they're like just mutated, like mangled bodies. They're still alive, making these horrible like moaning noises and just, but they're just like fused together. I think the kid, Jack, is like, fused to the, his mum's back and they're both muted it's just horrible again it's like I don't like I don't like anything in films happening to kids you can show what you want happening to some you know an adult but I don't like you know but anyway it's just something you have to accept it's in the film um, yeah so that's a real yeah that's what it is <laughs> um, and while all that's going on, flipping Lavinia's up there, some doing. She's obviously gone nuts. They've all gone nuts. She's she's doing some sort of pagan, no, or whatever it is, some sort of ritual. This witch stuff she does, and uh, she's cutting. She's got a flipping Stalin off, um, and she's just cutting flipping lines into her into herself, and she's doing that while the obviously the mum and Jack are getting fused together, and then she comes out and sees them. They've been brought in on the sofa, put on a sofa, and she sees them. She screams, and and then they uh, they carry them up into the loft, the fused, you know, the, the I don't know what you'd call them now. Anyway, the fused mother and son. They carry them up into the loft, um, and then Nathan Gardner goes out into the uh, barn and he just shoots the heads off all the alpacas, which have like just merged into one sort of just, I mean mutated thing by this point so he uh he shoots them all he shoots them all in the head and then he comes back upstairs to the loft where the uh his wife and son are fused together and uh i think he's i think he's gonna sh i think he's, he's implied that he's gonna shoot her shoot them and put them out of the misery um and then i think he changed his mind and he oh it's disgusting and he gives her a kiss and there's all this slime and stuff like that stretch away from their lips when they've finished kissing, and it's like, oh, it's disgusting. But it's supposed to be, isn't it? Uh, then we then we're back with the hydrologist, and he's in town in Arkham, and uh, he's coming out of the courthouse for whatever he's been doing, and he bumps into the sheriff, and the sheriff calls him over, and he pulls his tarpaulin back on the back of his truck, and he's all these dead mutated animals, and he's like, can you tell us anything about this? I mean, what's going on here? And it's just, it's just, it's just piled up with dead animals, mutated animals that have obviously been in the vicinity of the uh, the knife and uh, the garden farm. Um, and yeah, they're just in a right state. So they set off back to the house to try and um, check on the gardener family. And uh, yeah, uh, and then we're back on the farm, and the old, oldest son Ben, I think his name is Ben. He, uh, he thinks he's seen the family dog down the well. So he, uh, he ventures down the well to try and get the dog back. And, uh, and then this blast comes out of it and he's, he's gone. So he's out of it. And then, uh, and then Nathan Garner comes along. 
this is a terrible review. I apologise for this. I'm all, I'm, I am so bad at these reviews, but I, I just need to get it out there. I get get it off my chest. Tell you what I think. Describe it. Blah blah blah. I know I'm shit at it. I do know that. Just bear with me. Um, yeah, Nathan comes out. He grabs hold of his daughter, takes her in the house. He's going nuts. He's obviously well. By this part, I keep saying he's obviously lost the plot. They're all nuts by now. And what he does, he takes her up into the loft, shoves her into the room with her mum, and locks the door. And um, obviously she's screaming and that and wants to get out. Turns around and um. I think she's, I don't know if she's, I first thought she was like eating her face, like sort of comes, she, um, she anyway, sorry, I'm, I've caught that up. The, um, the mum comes over who, they've mutated even more now. They're almost like a spider scuttling over the, across the room, grab hold of Lavinia and just pin her down. And I thought, like I said, I thought they were eating her face, but she was just like, I don't know what she was doing, to be honest. Um, but at this point, the hydrologist and the sheriff are back and they knock on the door and uh, Nick Cage comes to the door and he's and he's it's a real good performance this moment. He's just he's just like a doddering old fool. He's like um you know, he welcomes him in like do you want a drink and sit down, blah blah blah. He's totally um just not aware of what you know, go what's going on. He's he's just he does mental so well. He does mental so well. Anyway, so they come in. He um he says what they say. Where's your wife and that? And he says, oh, she's upstairs or something. No, 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 he doesn't. He points to the lounge and says, there they are. They're all there, like as if they were there and there's no one there. So they know he's he's nuts by this point. And then they hear a scream from upstairs. Lavinia, who's getting attacked by a mutated mother. So they rush upstairs, check on her, but burst open the door, and um, and sh- the, the mutated mum is there on top of Lavinia, like trying to do whatever to her, and um, and you th- I'm thinking, Jesus, do something, you know what I mean? And then suddenly, poof, her head get uh, the mutated mother's head is blown off, and I thought it was a sheriff, but it's not. Nathan Gardner's come up the stairs and done it himself. I might add at this point that the the effects are really good. They're all practical at this point. The um, well, they seem to be all practical. The uh, a mutated mum, the mutated Teresa Garn. It was it was it's all very very good to a very high level, and it's always nice to see them done practical. You know, back to uh, the old fashioned way of doing it. It's, it just it, everything looks more. It just looks better. Everything looks better, and this film is is it's done well. It's done really well. Um, and once he's done, anyway, once he's once he's blown the head off the wife, it's it's a bit of a sad bit because he's obviously he's, his son is deformed and on the back of the wife, deform, fused to her, and um, he's got this maniacal look on his face. He puts the gun to the kid's head, who's all mutated and the colours running through him, but he still manages to, the kid still manages to make this. It almost sounds like daddy, and it's a real bit of a gut-wrenching moment because obviously then he's, he's got the shotgun to his head and pff, yeah not a nice moment anyway they all go downstairs um, and they're looking out at the, the colour which is really sort of glowing by this point and the sheriff is standing behind all of them and he sees Nathan raise the shotgun and he thinks he's going to shoot his daughter so the sheriff shoots Nathan and um, yeah, and then obviously they, you know, Lavinia is crying and blah blah blah, and then the sheriff and the hydrologist go off in search of Ezra, the old um, old fellow in the woods. And uh, this was quite a creepy bit actually, because as they're getting closer to his cabin, there's his, the sound of his voice, but it's really deep, like really sort of like echoey and deep. And I thought I was thinking at this point. What has he turned into? You know what I mean? I was thinking he was going to be some huge beast or something or something, but it wasn't. It was just his voice playing on a tape recorder. Um, and then they go in and push the door open, and he's sitting there in a chair, and he's all just like dead. He's dead. You know what I mean? He's sort of skeletal and and a little bit mutated, and yeah, and he's dead. Um, and they get out quick. 
and they're running away. And suddenly the sheriff, something whips him up out into the, into the air. And I thought, I, did, I, thought, I thought, what the hell was that? And um, the hydrologist points his torch up in the sky. And on first viewing, I wasn't sure what it was. It was some sort of creature or something. But on second viewing, I'm pretty sure it's the tree. The tree is come alive, has come alive, and uh, and it's taking him up, and it's sort of cocooning him, and uh, yeah, that's the end of the sheriff. Um, oh, and then uh, the hydrologist runs back to the, the farm, finds Lavinia staring down at the well, goes over to her, turns her around, and she's I forgot to mention she's got this like little symbol on her forehead. This little, just little, like a little shape drawn in. Oh, no, she probably cut it in. That's right, she cut it in when she was mutilating herself. Um, but anyway, the hydro uh, ward, I say his name was, the hydrology, he turns around and suddenly he's focused on this um, symbol on her forehead. And suddenly, I mean, I'm, I'm, I think it's from the perspective that he's viewing this, he's had this vision. He's looking at the sign on her forehead and he has this vision of this this and it's really good it's always i love, I love this kind of moment in, in in this sort of film where they he has this vision of this other world this this other realm where i'm guessing the color is a living being and, and it resides and whatever else and it just it takes you through this like little, this, this panning shot through this journey um of this otherworldly sort of landscape um to this tower where the color is sort of shining and uh, you know, it's all like other dimensional, and um, and this the thing on top of this tower is in the shape of the thing on Lavinia's forehead, and then he f comes out of it, and he's screaming. The hydrologist is screaming, falls to the floor, and he's obviously just had this. You know what I mean? His eyes have just been opened to that. He's just seen beyond the veil. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. So he's he falls onto the ground and he's screaming. And um, and he so he looks down at his hands, and like all the grass and stuff coming out of the ground, he seems to be growing up and trying to get hold of his hands and grow, grow around his hands. And um, and Lavinia sort of like she's standing there, like in front of him, and she just looks, she looks like demonic at this point. And uh, and out of the well and all behind him, just the color is just like like billowing into the, billowing into the sky, up into the into the heavens, and um. At this point, he down, looks down again at his hand, and it's like he starts moving around, and it's like almost like um, um, it's like when he moves his hand, it doesn't isn't just like his hand moves; it's like it bleed. The color bleeds into it, and um, you see like I don't even know how to explain it. It's like you see the pattern of where his hand's gone from, gone from too. You know what I mean? It's like he's all the reality is being distorted and everything's being pulled towards the uh, the plume that's going up into the sky of the colour. And everything's just, it's just like a very loud and um, apocalyptic at this point. Um, and, he, and he, yeah, the hydrology he goes back into the house. And, and at this point, I was a bit confused because I thought Nick Cage, I thought Nathan Gardner had just died when the sheriff, sheriff shot him. Um, and then he, he sees him sitting in, in the lounge in on the, on the in his chair and I, thought, I was thinking what I thought he was dead and I forgot to mention Nick Cage has got all this scaly stuff on his arms and his skin's going all mutated and that so he's um, and you, you see that quite a lot on his face at this point but I, I don't know I, I'm pretty sure this was a hallucination or something by um, the hydrologist he's imagining it but it was a bit of confusing this moment but uh, Nick Cage then starts to attack him he attacks the hydrologist and the rest of the family all appears on the sofa. It's a bit of a weird moment. Um, so I'm pretty sure it's just a, it's just a reality distortion and a, or a hallucination or whatever. Um, but he gets away. Nathan Gardner's trying to attack the hydrologist. The hydrologist gets away, goes down to the cellar and, um, and, um, Sound grows and grows and grows to a crescendo, and it's so loud. And then suddenly, um, it's just—it's all gone. Everything, everything fades to white, and um, we see the the colours gone. And it's just—he he, he wakes up. The hydrologist wakes up, comes out of the basement, and everything is just scorched. 
and like ash and like just gone. It's just desolate. I mean, um, the well's still there though, which is surprising. Um, but everything's just flattened, and then it pans up. It, it sort of it, it, the the camera sort of goes up into the skylight and shows you like um, it pans out and shows you like just like this circle area where the um, where you know like obviously the meteor that the color had landed right in the middle of this thing and it's just just destroyed everything around it. Um, and I'm guessing in the book they call it the blasted heath, don't they? Yeah, so I'm guessing that is. Was you know afterwards he's forever known as the blasted heath, um, and then we have the sort of the monologue that leads us out of the film, and uh, it's the hydrologist Ward um, talking about obviously re in, in the books again that they're going to build um I think they're building a reservoir or something to go through there, and he's talking about that he hopes the waters you know cover this place deep and. Um, you know, it's, it's it's long forgotten, but he and he sort of states that he'll never drink the water. And um, there's this at this point, there's this. I was it captivated me this bit, and it was only for five seconds or whatever how long it is. But there's this tracking shot of him standing on this the bridge of this dam. Actually, yeah, and it, so well, yeah, this is the the dam they've built. Then obviously covering it, I assume. Jesus, I'm sketchy. Sorry about this. You're probably trying to listen to this and thinking, Jesus, I can't stay with him. He's just all over the place. I am. I'm terrible at this, but tough. I'm doing it anyway. Um, there's this great tracking shot. So Ward is standing on this, this dam and he's tracking towards him. And there's this there's this sort of slightly cloudy um, but sky with the sun like dead in the middle and it tracks towards it and, and the sound the, the musical element they've got going on there it's just this noise this sort of sinister sort of mm, um and it's just great and as it's tracking towards the sun like, and and you just i just got this really like cosmic feeling of like i, I don't know i just got this like just this overwhelming feeling of like oh god you know what i mean I don't even know how, I don't know how to explain that any better. I just, it's just this thing I got in my gut watching it, especially with the little sounds they've got going on there. Promise me, you you don't write me off, okay? I know this review is terrible, and I can't explain what I'm trying to say right now. But when you see this, if you feel slightly the same, let me know because the, yeah, it was a great little moment. It really was, and obviously. The monologue he, he speaks leading out of it and just talking about um, how, you know, the colour out space, it was like a messenger from another world of realms that we can't possibly understand and stuff like that. Just all Lovecraft speak. And it's great. It's a real good, what's the word? Outro. I don't know if it's an out intro, outro, outro to, um, to the film. It really is. <clears throat> and that's pretty much it. That is it, and um, yeah, I've gone on, I've done now. I don't even know how long's this review. Um, yeah, my final thoughts basically, I really liked it, I thought it was great. Um, I think Richard Stanley did a great job directing, all the actors did a brilliant job. A couple of moments that I said a little bit cheesy, uh, a couple of moments that I thought were quite funny, but they didn't, they didn't, you know, they didn't detract from it. I thought they were good. Uh, a lot of moments of, of tension and fear and and dread, which is such a it's always what I'm looking for. Um, just, just yeah, I'm just happy with this film. I'm just very, very happy with it, and um, I cannot wait for this. I, I hope nothing goes wrong. I hope this film makes money. Get out there, buy it, give them your support. And hopefully we'll get the Dunwich Horror and possibly more, who knows. But yeah, can't wait for that. Anyway, I'll leave it there. I think you all know what I think of it now. And um, thank you for listening. Check it out for definite. You won't be disappointed. And um, yeah, thanks for listening. Cheerio for now. <laughs>